I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Welcome to the program. I trust it's going to be a blessing today as we begin this new year. I ask you each week to pick up that telephone, call a friend or a neighbor, and many of you do that, and it helps me advertise this ministry. And listen, if you see me in town, please stop and introduce yourself and let me know that you're viewing. People do that, and it encourages me as well to keep this going. Now we're getting right into the singing today. Our church choir is singing this wonderful, wonderful song, Alpha and Omega. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold the tabernacle of God is with men. He shall dwell within them, they shall be his people, and Almighty God will be with them. He shall wipe away all tears from them. said, Behold, I make all things do. He said unto me, Write these words, for they are faithful and true, and it is done. It is Trust that you have enjoyed the song by the church choir. We are going to have another song in just a minute, but right now, I want to take this opportunity to invite you, if you don't have a church home, to visit with us here at Westside Baptist Church. 
You may be new in this area, not know exactly where we are located, so let me give you some very brief directions. If you will simply drive downtown, driving south on Jackson Street, you will pass the old courthouse, drive to the bottom of the hill. Now, at the bottom of the hill, the street changes in name only to LaGrange Street. You will drive down LaGrange Street past the Newnan High School and drive one and a half miles further. Look for the church on the left-hand side of the road. In fact, just look for the big white cross on the church sign, 762 Smoky Road. Our services begin on Sunday morning with 10 o'clock Sunday school, 11 o'clock morning worship, 6 p.m. the evening service, and on Wednesday at 6.30, the children's programs. Then at 7 o'clock, the teen ministers and the adult Bible study and prayer service. Come out and visit with us. We'd be so thrilled, so honored to have you do that. Now we're getting right back into the singing. Our very own Harmons are going to sing for us now at this time. That's where the amazing grace comes in. across that river though it's chilly deep and wide grace is pure and amazing and in abundant supply grace sufficient free to you and I I'm so glad Just before the message, one more song. Our church choir is singing Good News from Jerusalem. Thank you. 
trust that you have enjoyed the singing today. Now, let's take a look in the book. If you have your Bible and you would like to read along with me, I suggest that you take a pencil and a piece of paper. Jot these references down. That way, you can study them in detail at a later time. As I look around, I see that many people are discouraged. There are financial issues, health issues, family issues. Everything seems to be caved in on many people today. And I see Christians who are discouraged. I see people who are wondering, what's happening? Where's God at? Well, let me give you some scriptures today to encourage you if you are in that situation. Listen to me very carefully and get your Bible and read along with me. The first scripture that I want to bring to your attention is Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And we see here, we should not be weary in doing Christ's will. As we look at this scripture, it says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Notice this scripture very carefully. It says, Not to be weary in well-doing. What is well-doing? Doing the will of God what the Bible instructs us to do, how we have conducted our life according to the Word of God. When we are walking in His light, that's the Word, 
then he's faithful and just to be there with us and carry us through every trial and through every difficult time in our life. It may not be exactly the way we want it, but remember this, my dear friend. God knows, and God's knowledge is best, and he will bring you through it. As we see, it says, in due time, a particular time, at that appointed time when God realizes that you are in a desperate situation, you have looked to him, prayed to him, believed him, in due season, in due time, God shows up. Hey, listen, he's an on-time God today. He says, we shall reap. That means we shall gather in. If we faint not, if we don't give up, don't give up on God. He has never given up on you today. Hey, listen, let me encourage you. <laughs> Trust the Lord Jesus Christ in your difficult hour. Trust him through what difficult thing you're facing. It may be sickness. It may be financial. It may be family. Whatever sickness or financial situation or what you're facing today, my God is able to meet you in that need and walk with you through that need. And hey, listen, he loves you. God has not turned his back on you, but he wants you to trust him. Many times he allows these things to come into our path to get our attention. Maybe we're focusing on the wrong thing in life. Maybe God has one avenue that he wants us to travel down. But yet we seem to want by the flesh to go in a different direction. God sometimes allows these things to come into our path to redirect our walk. You see, he wants a relationship with all of his children. And how you listen, he's our heavenly father. And we are his children. And listen, a father loves his children. And a father will sacrifice for his children. Try to provide everything that the children need that are helpful, remember that, that are helpful. It says, in due season we shall reap benefit if we don't give up on God, if we don't give up on the situation. Just keep looking up because he's there for us. Then we go to the book of Mark, and here in chapter 16, verse 15, we see these words of encouragement. And he, that's Jesus, said unto them, Go ye into all the world, the cosmos, the world system, and Preach the gospel in every, to every creature. We as believers are supposed to spread the word. We are supposed to tell others about the good news. Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which is lost. Now I realize everybody cannot go to the foreign mission field. Everybody's not called to be a missionary. Everybody's not called to be a preacher in the pulpit. But every person who is born again has that responsibility to tell the good news to those around for what God has done to you and to me personally and share with them that hope that they can enjoy that same benefit if they trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. <laughs> Every creature, God loves the world. He's no respecter of person. He loves everybody, and he wants everybody to be at home with him in heaven when they pass from this walk into the next walk. But, man, dear friend, don't give up on God. He has never given up on you. Oh, listen, we should not be weary in living the Christian life. I've had people say, oh, Brother Melvin, it's so hard to be a Christian. No, no, no. You see, we find that Jesus Christ is with us all the way. Let me just read from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 4, these words of encouragement about this weary walk. And they, that's the children of Israel, journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea. You remember, they had been in Egyptian bondage all those years. God was delivering them out from that oppression, and he was carrying them to the promised land. Now, the trip from leaving Egypt to the promised land was a hard trip. It took many years for them to get to where God wanted them to be. They had to be obedient. They had to follow God. But sometimes they'd begin to question God, grumble. Hey, <laughs> listen, must have been Baptist. They grumbled and they complained. But my dear friend, I want to tell you, in the end, God brought them through. 
said they compassed the land of Edom. And the soul of the people were much discouraged because of the way. It was hard. It was a hard trip. Now, this journey here becomes a hard journey sometimes. We walk through difficult times. Times when we are confused and wonder what's going on. Times of difficulty, financial, health, family, whatever it might be. But remember, God is always there. He is an on-time God today. <laughs> I want to tell you once again, God is there for those who are, get, who are discouraged. Go with me to the book of John, uh, chapter 6, verse 66, and listen to these words. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Isn't that sad? Don't give up on God. He's never given up on you, but see, here's those who turned their back on God and walked away. Oh, listen. But then in 1 John, that's his epistle in chapter 2, verse uh, 15 through verse number 17, listen to the reading of this word. Love not the world. Now, that's a challenge. Love not this cosmos, this world system. Now, we are in the world, but we as believers should not be of the world, neither the things which are in the world. In other words, those things that are worldly. And I don't have to enumerate those. I don't have to name those. You know the things that a Christian is supposed to abstain from. You know what they are, my dear friend. And he just simply says, love not these things, these worldly things. See, they will occupy your mind. They will control you. They will control your walk, your actions and even your speech. So we have to focus on God. It says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In other words, when you begin to become so focused on the worldly things, then your love for God becomes cold and colder as you go. And finally, you will wonder, well, where is God at? Okay, in verse number 16, it says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world, this world system. May I say, dear friend, we as Christians should abstain. Verse number 17 concludes with, the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of the Father, abideth forever. We are eternally secured under the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I know the world is attractive. The world presents the allurement, if you please, the pull to the flesh. But we should not let the flesh rule us. When we have the Holy Spirit living within us, we should be led by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. And be separated. Come ye out from among the, among the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord. That is an instruction. And friend, when we walk that path, things get brighter. Our way gets easier, if you please. Because you see, our faith is anchored even in those difficult times when it seems like we do not know what's going to happen, what's going to take place next. Our faith is anchored in the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ will bring us through these things. <laughs> oh, listen. Then uh, we should not worry in meeting for worship. Once again, we should not be weary, but rather, in meeting for worship. Acts chapter 20, verse number 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. They were there to hear from God. The old saying is, we came to get in, not to get out. They were willing and wanting and hunger for the Word of God. So we should have that hunger to go to the house of the Lord, where we could be fed from manner on high, but then we should not be weary in bringing our gifts to the Lord. <laughs> Listen to this one. 
1 Corinthians 16, 2. Upon the first day of the week, listen now, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered, that there be no gathering when I come. Now, this is the words of Paul when he comes, that he would not have to take an offering for the support of the, of the ministry. Then don't be weary in serving others. That's what we're here for as Christians. We're to love one another, serve one another, help one another. Second Thessalonians 3.13 says, But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. <laughs> Listen. And then don't be weary in waiting for the Lord's return. He's coming again. It's going to be soon. In Luke 12, 14, but, and if that servant say, uh, say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the manservant and the maids, and to eat and drink, and uh, to be drunken. In other words, getting your eyes focused on the world, the world system, when the Lord Jesus Christ has said he's coming again. In John chapter 6, verse 16, chapter 6, verse 66, from that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Oh, listen, Jesus Christ is coming. And it's not going to be long. But we as God's people should be comforted in the fact that we have the Holy Spirit living within us. We should be comforted in the fact that the Holy Spirit is God in us and comforted in the fact that the Word of God has declared to us that we have the hope and that we have the home through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Friend, don't give up on God. He has never given up on you. Remember, God loves you, and so do we at Westside Baptist Church. Until this same time next week, this is Brother Melvin Payne, the pastor of Westside Baptist Church, saying goodbye. God bless you, and go with God. You've been watching the Guiding Light Broadcast. If you would like Pastor Melvin Payne, along with the congregation of Westside Baptist Church, to pray over a specific prayer request,